So here we are. This is, I guess, the second episode of this series. I'm in week one. Have not. I just advanced to the beginning of the season. So I thought I'd real quick before I dive into my first action, look around at the college football uh, landscape in general. Top stories. You've got Ohio State. They're ranked number two. Um, and you've got a story about Clemson, who is ranked number one, about Ken Lawrence, lead Tigers to the 2020 National Championship. Uh, another story about Clemson. Then we move into Alabama, who's ranked number three. They're out to prove that defense wins championships. Then a story about Tuo Tuo and Tennessee, who is ranked number 25 to start 2020. USC uh, and their swarming defense. Northern Illinois, uh, but with their 21 <laughs> straight home winning streak. I don't know if that's that part is accurate. Uh, but then there's some uh, talk about bad blood between Notre Dame and Knight and Navy as they go into their rivalry game this week. And as you can see, you got some updated logos. I thought I would also look around at that uh, as we oops as we start uh, this Coach Mode Dynasty. Real quick, looking at the preseason polls. You see Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, LSU, the defending national champions. You might also notice, you know, the uh, the updated logos on some of these teams. Um, we go down Texas A&M, Texas, Oklahoma State, Michigan, USC, uh, North Carolina, Cincinnati, Central Florida, Utah, Iowa State, Iowa, and then there is Tennessee. And I, as a Vol fan, I can tell you that is the new the new power tee that they've been using since they signed with Nike. Um, and we won't go too far, but you can kind of get a look at some of their teams. There's Appalachian State. As I said, they have replaced Idaho, um, Washington, Kentucky, Indiana, Baylor, Cal, TCU, Virginia. That is the new Virginia logo. Um, Navy, uh, Florida State. That is the updated Florida State logo. Air Force, Mississippi State. I'm pretty sure that that is not the one that was used in the original 2014. Um, and we'll go real quick to the coaches poll to start the season. Um, pretty close to what it was in real life. I'm not sure if they, they, had, if they got this exactly matched up, but it is you know pretty accurate. Uh, I do know that Tennessee started at near 25, if that's not exactly where they were. Um, then we will real quick look at the conference outlook. First of all, we'll start with our team, right? The Sun Belt. Uh, Coastal Carolina uh, picked to finish seventh, right? So our goal, um, winning the Sun Belt might be a little out of reach. You look at the teams ahead of us, though. I mean, we're pretty close, but we, Appalachian State and Louisiana are probably a, a class ahead of us. So if we could finish third, that would be a success. So that's going to kind of be our, our goal. Um, but real quick, looking at the, we'll look, uh, some of the conference changes, um, in the big 10, you do have Maryland right now in the big 10. That was not true in 2014. Oh, also Rutgers. You also have big 10 split in East and West instead of leaders and legends, the ACC, of course, you've got Louisville, uh, now in the ACC. Um, I think that was the only real difference from what was in 2014, or no, no, they actually added Pittsburgh and Syracuse, right? Yeah, um, since 2014. Um, not much else different. Big uh, the um, uh, independents still are, are now just Notre Dame and BYU. Um, everybody else is pretty much the same. And there might be a little difference with the American East. Uh, I did make one change. I have Army in the American East East, although the schedule, they will not be playing an American East or an American conference schedule. Uh, the uh, schedule for the 2020 season that I downloaded has them as an independent. So, but they're in the conference. They just won't, you know, accumulate any record uh, until next season. Um, so that in Conference USA, I think is a little different, right? You've got Charlotte. The Charlotte 49ers are in Conference USA now, as they are in real life. Also, Old Dominion was added to Conference USA. I think uh, Western Kentucky also um, was a new addition to Conference USA since 2014 came out. So I won't spend many more time on that. You kind of get an idea of who was picked to go where. Um, so... With that said, uh, let's dive in real quick to recruiting. I have not even looked at recruiting yet, so let's we'll look and see what um, my efforts uh, have brought me after in the preseason. 
And so I'm still kind of in the running for Ross. Um, let's see if anybody else has. And it doesn't look like um, I might leave him on for now. I don't see scholarship offer. So yeah, I'll leave him on for now. Oops, didn't mean to leave that. Kennedy uh, within 280. I'll take that. I'm in the lead still for Blake Montgomery. Ross Bryant still there. I'm in the lead for Corey Reed. That's good news. Yeah, most of these guys I'm not out of the running yet. Of course, I didn't get too ambitious with who I put on my board. Yeah, I'm going to have a tough decision. Um, yeah, Simpson does not have me anywhere there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave him on for now. I probably won't put any points toward him, but I'll leave him on. Um, going to have some decisions to make on whether or not, uh, on which guys I put points toward. Like anybody else, I, I pick 10 guys and go all out until I can, you know, start signing them, you know, and then I go from there. Yeah, I'm not out of the running really yet for anyone. So I don't see anybody that I can take off the list. So my my challenge will be this week in recruiting is figuring out uh, my priorities, my recruiting priorities, which will probably be the guys I'm ranked highest for, to be honest with you. But uh, I'll make that decision off screen. And next, uh, we'll, I'll move to week two and then kind of give you a, a brief update there. So here we go. Game one of the Jace Evans offensive coordinator stint at Coastal Carolina. And our first game is we are at South Carolina. We're playing against the Gamecocks. And here goes our quarterback drop Grayson McCall. His first pass. A wobbly throw to the ground. <laughs> not a great start. Not a good first play. But as we'll see here, he quickly recovers. Throws a nice little out route there to number four, uh, who is our H receiver. And that was, our, I believe, our H shallow cross. Here McCall makes a little audible. Hands it off to the running back who goes up the middle. And he breaks a tackle and gets a big gain. That's C.J. Marable. He's our starting running back. I probably am mispronouncing his name. But a uh, big run there uh, helped us to get that first down. And now we're at midfield challenging the Gamecock defense. Obviously, the Gamecocks, a Power 5 SEC team. And here we see a part of McCall's game that drives me nuts. He takes the snap and he takes off. And I hate, I hate running quarterbacks. I want my quarterback to drop back and trust the system, trust the offense. And there he has a nice little uh, throw to the to number three on the shallow cross there. And I don't know all the names yet. I'm working on it. Uh, this is the first game. I'm not a Coastal Carolina diehard fan. But here McCall finds number three again across the middle. He gets the ball up to the 25. And we are now in the South Carolina red zone trying to score on our first drive. And here McCall drops back on the corner route. He finds... Uh, Isaiah Likely, he, uh, that is our tight end. So Coastal Carolina, I normally don't play with tight ends very much, but McCall, uh, with a nice pass here. Uh, the Carolina tight ends, uh, their top two tight ends, are actually better receivers than my three and four receivers. And here we see the handoff for the touchdown. C.J. Marable puts the ball into the end zone for the first score in Coastal Carolina, uh, Jace Evans' offense history. And uh, so I ha I will be this season putting the tight ends out a little more than I normally would. And there we see Greg Latushko with the catch across the middle. He gets the ball up for about four yard gain. And here McCall again takes off running. And it's fine, I guess, when he gains yards. But too often it'll happen where they won't. They'll they'll take a loss. And really, if they would just sit back and throw the ball or throw it away, uh, but instead he uh, he gets sacked. And here we see. A good throw across the middle to highlight. That is, this is our not our top receiver, and I always put my tight end in the Y spot, in the Y position, or my best receiver at the Y position. He's the closest to the quarterback, um, and so usually I get my most production out of that position. And so uh, in this case, I have him there. So we see this at the end of the first quarter. Uh, we are tied with South Carolina seven to seven. We are still in it. Um, and so here, uh, start the second quarter just across midfield. Grayson call another good throw here. This time he finds the tight end likely for a 14-yard gain. And so we move now deeper into South Carolina territory. McCall takes the snap, 
and bubble screen out uh, to Latushko, who picks up three yards on the gain. Normally, I like to throw a lot of screens, but when I'm playing against a team that has much more talent on defense than I do on offense, I won't throw as many, but I'll still throw in. I try to throw at least, even in this situation, one screen a drive. And there we see another throw to our top receiver, Highly. He's got 34 yards on three catches up to now. Here uh, we have a uh, uh, jet sweep fake, and we hand it off up the middle. I like to run that play uh, when it's short yardage. And in this case, Marable gets the first down, and here we see another little uh, looping, an orbit motion, as we call that. Um, and he throws it out to the back, who went in motion, Marable, but he can't do anything with it, so we lose the yard. Again, that's another play where it'll be more productive when we get some better players. Coastal Carolina's offense is very poor in, in, uh, in the college football revamp roster. So here he drops back, uh, and he, this was a middle screen thrown out to Latushko, who gets four yards on the reception. I'll take that. It's a good game. Um, but it does put us at third and six. So McCall here drops back. Again, he's got two tight ends on the field. But he does take off in here. He finds space, and he gets the first down. So far, his taking off running has not hurt us too badly. That is our 10th first down, and we're, we're not even halfway through the second quarter yet. So good production so far. There's a throw across the middle to Fountain, Dion Fountain. He is our H receiver. He picks up. That's his first catch of the game. H typically gets my least amount of production. And there's a throw across the middle to highlight the top receiver, uh, on first and goal, that will should make it second. No, I guess that was. That was for the first down. And here we ended off to Marable. He takes it up the middle. He gets the touchdown. And we get our second lead of the game on South Carolina, an SEC opponent. South Carolina obviously is not Alabama, but still, you know, they're a, they're a much better team than we are. Here we have a little halfback screen, and it didn't work like I had hoped it would. Again, uh, when I get better players, these screens will work better. Marable only gains one yard on that play. Um, so then we go to second down and 11. And uh, I'm in no huddle right now. I, I know most air raid offenses go full no huddle, but I want to make sure that I get the receivers in the positions I want. So I don't usually go no huddle. I just up the tempo. And But here, uh, we're nearing the end of the half, so I'm trying to get something out of this drive. Uh, throw across the middle to Fountain gets us the first down. So we're now at about the 40-yard line. And clock is, I think I called the timeout. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, but I hurried to the line. And here, again, the call. This is, this is the time when it really drives me nuts. And you can see I'm frustrated there. Uh, only one yard. And, and there's only 13 seconds left. I can't afford him to be running in that situation, but he did it. And so now I had to waste a timeout. Truth is, though, you know, 17 seconds left. You know, is it really a waste? How many timeouts are you even going to be able to call anyway? And there we see on the hitch route to Highly, uh, or High, I, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. Uh, another six yards, third and three, have to call a second timeout. We've got seven seconds left. So here I'm kind of hoping, uh, I'm going with all verts, as you'll be able to see. And really just, I'm just trying to get, uh, to get in field goal range. I'm hoping that he throws a quick pass, gets into field goal range, and then we try a long kick. But it gets deflected. So now I have three seconds left. Right? And here I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to get anything out of this. You know, the field goal thing is out. So once again, I call four verticals, uh, or all, all verts, and send everybody along. And we see what happens, right? I mean, what else can you do? So McCall here takes the snap, drops back. He looks, he has enough time. I think he was about to run, but look at that. He finds 17, not Latushko. This is my X receiver. I can't remember his name, Denmark. Uh, and I think that was his, I want to say that was his first catch of the game. He evades a tackle, gets into the end zone, and uh, what was really just a desperation throw that Denmark had to come back to get. He, uh, he finds the space and takes it to the house. And we are shocking the world at halftime. It's 21-14. Here again, now we see McCall. Tries to take off and run. Nothing. Sacked for a three-yard loss. I don't think he would have another run for gain for the rest of the game. So here we go. Uh, second and 13. Drops back. And again, sack. So now, now I'm at third and 14. And at this point, I'm ready to bench McCall. But I leave him out there. He takes the snap here. 
Throws it to his left, and he find he he keeps his starting position. He finds Latushko for a 19 yard reception, and we get the first down on third and long. Um, big big play there. Had to have that one at least to keep the ball moving. Now we got we got a we got a we got a at least with the lead on South Carolina, and there's a bubble pass that he overthrows his man. But we we want to keep the lead uh, as long as we can here. Even if we don't score, we want to hang on to the ball to give South Carolina less time with it. And here, our backup running back, Reese White, with a catch out of the backfield. He picks up 11 yards. So now we're near midfield. McCall here in trouble. He gets the ball away, but he gets hit. And so now we go to second and 10. McCall drops back. Plenty of time. Throws a slant across the middle. He finds Latushko for a 10-yard reception. Tushko had a very productive day. He picks up 50, his 52nd yard on his seventh catch. And here uh, he goes long, and look at that. There's Denmark again. Denmark is my, uh, I think he's the Z. He's either the X or the Z receiver. He, I know he's an outside guy, and I put my top receiver at Y, no matter what the rate. My overall top is the Y, and then my top, and my next two fastest receivers. And sometimes it's the two fastest. I put them at X and Y or X and Z on the outside, and there you see why. Uh, when you saw Denmark's catch here, McCall again tries to run. He get, he can't doesn't get anywhere. Here he goes again and again. He doesn't get anywhere. This is why in my offense I just hate having a running quarterback. Unfortunately, and there you see he's tired. Now he's tired, and we're trying to get in the end zone. So, but here he drops back, throws it across the middle, and he is a good pass. But uh, 14, I can't think of the player's name now, uh, drops it. And so we had to settle for a field goal attempt. And I think we even had a false start. So it was fourth and 16. But the kick was good. So we took a 10-point lead. South Carolina would score, cut it to three. We get the ball back, and now we're in the fourth quarter. Uh, highlight here on a uh, jet sweep, handed to the receiver. He picks up eight yards. I try to, you know, try. I, I don't do the uh, uh, read option stuff. Uh, for one, most air raid teams don't. Well, the Mike Leach air raid teams don't. And so, uh, I don't. And I also feel like it's overly effective in the game. But here you get De uh, Denmark with an 8-yard reception. He's already got 97 yards, pushing 100 yards. Here McCall, across the middle, finds High Lie for an 8-yard catch. Again, these are the kind of catches that I get out of that Y position. So he's got 9 receptions. And those are tough catches across the middle. Here he goes across the middle again, but this one's to Latushko. Latushko, I think, is my Z receiver. He gets, picks up 19 yards, and we're moving the ball again. We're in a rhythm. Like, it just feels like we're kind of in a rhythm here, and that's what you really want with the air raid offense in a, in a pitch-and-catch rhythm. And we're moving the ball, and, 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 it, and when McCall, when my quarterback takes off running, that's what always kills my rhythm. Here we go with a running play. Uh, Bennett, who I believe is the third team running back, picks up two yards. Not much there. I knew there wouldn't be much in the running game, and I don't like calling running plays anyway. There is Latushko with the drop. Probably needed that. Goes to third and eight, and we're about we're at the 29. Almost ran out of the play clock here, but we uh, we uh, for some reason I decided to audible at the line. I felt like I might be able to get the first down on the run play. I also didn't want to throw a pick. I kind of wanted to make sure I still had a chance at this field goal. It's a 45-yarder, and we make it to push the lead to 27-21. So we've got a six-point lead. Uh, so now South Carolina has to have a touchdown, and they they throw an interception. And so we have the ball at, at the South Carolina 30. There's the handoff to, to Marble. He gets four yards. Here McCall drops back, throws across the middle. This time he finds Fountain for a seven-yard catch. Fountain got three receptions, 27. It should have been four, but he had a drop. Here we call an audible. I audible to the middle screen. I like that middle being wide open, but it closed really fast. <laughs> I, I didn't read the defense well there, and uh, the touch coat paid the price. And so now we go to second and ten. And we go trips left here. And we just hand it off again. I might have gotten a little overly conservative. But I have a six-point lead against a Power 5 team. So I'm trying to make sure that I get a two-score lead out of this drive. So then we go to third and seven. McCall drops back. He throws it complete to Bennett. But Bennett steps out of bounds to make it fourth and two. 
So, and I'm the offensive coordinator. I don't get to make those decisions, but the coach decides to try for the field goal. Probably the right choice. He makes it, and we take a 30-21 lead, which means South Carolina, with 3.42 left, has to score twice. They drive down and kick a field goal, a lot like the Tennessee game South Carolina played the other day. They uh, they were down uh, seven against Tennessee, and instead of going for it, for it down, they kicked a field goal. And there we see the run play. We didn't get anything out of that. We lost three yards. McCall there throws into a crowd, so it's third down and 13, which it looks like South Carolina is going to get the ball back. This is the recipe for disaster. But here, McCall drops back. He hangs tough in the pocket, throws a, makes a nice throw off his back foot, finds highlight, top receiver. He goes to the guy. You go to your top receiver, and he did it. We picked up 17 yards in the first down. Here, I thought White was going to be able to get through and get to that first down. It really probably would have sealed the game, but he didn't. So it goes to second and five. Here, he gets put down behind the line of scrimmage for a one-yard loss. So now it's third and six. And this was a tough choice to make. Do I run the ball and try to eat some clock? Uh, or do I throw for the first down? So I decided to run it. I called an audible there. Uh, you didn't see it, but uh, I had a pass call, but called an audible when I saw the, the box. They, South Carolina only had five in the box, so I thought we had man-on-man -man blocking, which we did, but they made a play. So... South Carolina here has it first and 10. Now, I'm the offensive coordinator, so normally I don't get to see the uh, their offense play my our defense. But this time, I, I watch the play. South Carolina goes long, and boom. Interception by our safety. That's the second pick of the game, second pick of the fourth quarter, I think. Spillum. I don't know who Spillum is. He's on defense. He gets it, and here we see the greatest play, the greatest play call in college football. The victory formation kneel down. And that would be the end of the game. Shocking the world. Coastal Carolina goes into Columbia, walks out with a 30-24 to 24 win. And, uh, I, I mean, obviously, you got to credit the defense that held holding South Carolina to 24. But our offense played pretty well. We, uh, we moved the ball. We scored 30 points against a much better defense. I think we punted uh, twice, two, man, two or three times. Um which I didn't show all the drives. I only showed kind of the scoring drives. This drives where there was where something actually happened. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll quick we'll look here at the stats. Um, blow past that here. Look at the uh, the game stats. And as you see, score thirty twenty four. We had twenty three first downs. That's a pretty good number. I aim for twenty five to thirty. Uh, total offense four hundred fifty yards. That's pretty successful. Only eighty six yards run running. Um, but I tell you, what, I did not call 29 running plays. McCall ran the ball. I think we'll see it in a second. But passing, McCall had a great day, 37 to 49. He only threw one touchdown, but, you know, still, we scored three times. Uh, scored three touchdowns. He had 364 yards passing, 40% third down conversion. That's pretty good against an SEC opponent. We got our one fourth down attempt, and we were 100% in the red zone. Two touchdowns, two field goals. Uh, South Carolina, on the other hand, was only 60%. And they also had two turnovers. That right there might have been the difference. We scored when we had our opportunities, and they did it. We putted four times. Um, so I'd call that mostly a successful day, right? Dominated time of possession. So after that win, big win over South Carolina, this week Coastal Carolina will be traveling up to eastern Michigan to take on uh, the um, – I forget what their name is, the the Eastern Michigan whatevers, the E's. All right, so we'll be playing against the E's. Uh, I probably won't record this game. I probably won't do a live com on it. Um, so we will go ahead real quick, though, and look at the recruiting situation. I, I'm probably going to go back. Right now I've got 16 targets. I cleaned out a lot of the, my targets from week zero from the preseason. But just to kind of look some of the guys I'm looking at, I've got, a, I've got some needs to fill, right? And so receiver is one of the areas I'm looking for. I'd hoped that the win over South Carolina would get me a couple of early, early commitments, but that has not been the case. No commitments as of yet. But I do lead on uh, this guy, McCarty, the receiver, uh, Cedric Mills. And I also need a punter. And I'm a, I'm first for this guy, Keith Long. I really, really, really hope I get this punter. Uh, he is by far, when I looked at my pipeline states, this he was the top punter available. I only had three. 
and uh, another was a three star who I, I've already dropped because he just I would, had no chance. And then the other was a one star, and I don't recruit one stars. Like I'll take a walk on over a one star. And so hopefully I get this guy though. He looks you know decent. I've not been able to do as much scouting because I my head coach does not have very high recruiting ranking. So all I know is this punter's jumping ability, which I don't know why I would need to know that, but I guess I do. Um, so. Uh, He's somebody that I need uh, cornerback, uh, really in the secondary in general. I, I need guys there. But, you know, hey, I'm worrying about offense right now. Uh, one receiver that I don't lead for, but I do hope that I get is this guy, Curtis Smith. I am hopeful for him. He, uh, I don't know his speed yet, but it's an A, so I'm hoping I'm hoping for the best there. So um, he is he's a guy that I hope I get. I don't lead for him yet, but, you know, Ideally, he will, you know, he'll come, he'll really help me to take the the offense to the next level if I'm still here next season. And then I found this guy Burton, who was available, and uh, I am on his list. And I don't think any of these other schools are recruiting him yet. So um, yeah, I've already gained 190 on UCLA. So my hope is that they don't go after him and he ends up signing with me. Uh, he's also in South Carolina. And these other four schools are really far away. You got UCLA, Washington, California. They're in Cal they're all the way on the other side of the country. Pittsburgh's kind of far away. So I'm hoping that location will play in my factor or in my uh, uh, <laughs> will play an advantage for me there in my favor. That's what the word I was looking for. <clears throat> so um, then I got a lot of other guys that I have on my list that I'm still holding out hope for that I can finally start putting some points toward. I even offered a scholarship to this guy Holloway, a free safety. He's low rated, but I liked his, uh, I think it was his bench. Um, I think he had a high or high squat. And so that kind of made me uh, scout him, go after him. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping that he is a gem. I'm hoping he, he'll, he'll pick up seven or eight and get up to a 62. Um, so that's kind of where I'm recruiting. Just a quick look at that. So uh, this is Vol Force One. I will uh, see you guys next week. Well, the next game that I'll probably live com is the trip to Tennessee. We play Eastern Michigan this week, and then we go to Knoxville, cross the uh, Appalachian Mountains, and we will take on the Volunteers, where hopefully we can get another shocking win. That is that is uh, my the character. I'm Jace, Jace Evans. That is his alma mater. So hopefully he can go get a win. Um, at UT. So I will sign off and see you next time.